everyone in a short video i'm going to show you how you can store your data uh, that you apply lots of data transformation in power query into your local machine or into your sql server so see the demo here to see that how we can do that so uh, as i mentioned i'm going to show you how you can store your export your data from power query to sql database or file in file location in your computer using r scripts i'm going to look at a very simple one a one-off one that means that every time you export it is actually going to store it in your computer just for the uh, it's not just a for business user it's just for a developer uh, that for one of they are going to do that if you want to do it as a kind of a schedule or the other, draw a different approach. This is the simplest way just by running the one R code over there. So I also wrote a blog post on that. Uh, I'm going to actually to show you a data set that I have, Game of Thrones image. Uh, I did lots of data transformation on that. I get the data from HBO website, it's free, and then I'm converted to the table and blah, 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 till I come up with the image of the each character there because I want to show the image of the characters in my dashboard and uh, so I need to do that data transformation. Now imagine that I want to store it in my local machine. So uh, that's actually the one I'm going to delete the one that I already have so you can see that how it works. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I need to install one R version in my machine. And also to make sure that I'm access to that, I need to go to the option and setting and then option. And under that, I need to kind of specify which R version I'm going to use. The same for Python. So just make sure that you use the same R version if you use a specific uh, uh, kind of library, just make sure that you use that one here and mention that one here. So here I'm going to show you that how is the process. Uh, under the transfer, I can see the run our scripts icon here. So I'm click on that. And here is a place that I can my write our code. So just look at the comments that we have here. Data set holds the input data for these scripts or for these queries. So all of my query about Game of Thrones image to store in variable there. Also, this script will run the following R installation. So that's a, uh, actually R version that I'm um, access to that. If you want to change, you can go back there. And there's a hint here. I'm going to use the same code that I put here. So this is a code that I have. Just need to... Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and put it here. So I use a function in R, write that table, doesn't need any library, pass the data set, pass the file location, and then this is the location that I have. I just need to change the name. So the name is the same, got image.csv. And it should create a file over there. Every time that I run my R scripts, it's going to store all of the data there. So it's going just to write over, write over there. So see that how it actually work. Okay, very fast. It's about, it's not a big data set, but it still is good. So if I go there, you can see that the uh, it was created, just created now is 860. Yeah, just took about less than a minute. So the same. The same process happened for the big data. So this just is a small one with 84 rows. Now we can try it on the another data set that I have there. I just need to copy the link and then back to the data set that has for fact, fact internet sales from AdventureWorks, and it has about 60,000 rows. So I just copy that one and control this and control V, just need to change the name. So I call it as fact inter, yeah, fact internet sales, something like that. To make it a bit different, I don't have it there. So I don't have, I have fake internet cell, but I don't have anything like that. So it's going to store it there. So uh, just 
pushed the OK button. It shouldn't take, it take a bit longer because it's connected to the R Studio and also to the, sorry, R version and download it, but shouldn't take that much time. If you're running the R Escape for the first time in your machine, just be careful that you kind of uh, provide the admission and permission to do that. So uh, it asks you about privacy and about privacy to be public, private. So just access the public one because for the first time is actually going to run R Escape. It's not about the privacy of data. So let's see that how it works. So if I just saw, yeah, here you are. And you can see all of the column as a CSV file over there. Very easy. So this is a very, very simple way to doing that. Of course, if you want to have some complex way, you there are interesting ways to do that. Uh, MK actually wrote a really nice and interesting blog post about that, how we can do it in Python. If you want to kind of don't overwrite and the other stuff. So this is a very simple way to write, to store in your machine. So now imagine that we have a SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to open my SQL Server Management Studio and see that how it work other there. So just let me open it. SQL Server Management Studio. So this is my SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, under the AI, if I, under the table, for example, I have one, I'm going to just let that one to create the new one. So I just delete it. And so I just refresh it to make sure there is no other tables there. So this is my SQL Server. I'm going to kind of write a code to store my power query over there. So. Here, this is a code. So you need to install a library name RODBC in your machine. Let me copy that code here. So now imagine that I'm back to my Power Query. I'm going here. And this time, instead of writing there or plus writing there, I want to write there. So for now, I just said I don't want. So I use a library RODBC. So what I need to go, I need to go to open my R Studio or the R version that I have, Microsoft R Open or whatever, and install the package. So the code to install is actually, if you want to use, is uh, actually install install.packages. Of course, you shouldn't write it here. Just want to show you that how it works. So our studio, I open my our studio to show the code. So you need to install the package RODBC there. Package RODBC has lots of functions that help you to assist you to connect to your SQL server. So I'm going to open the new R scripts and here just simply write install.packages RO D, B, C. So, and you need a kind of quotation here. And after you install, to check that if it's accessible now, use the function library, R, O, D, B, C. And it's actually, if you see the green things, means you install. If you're using the server, SQL Server one, uh, our services, or you, if you're connected, it should be already there. Okay. So, I'm not going to install it again, I think so. Yeah, so this is a one I'm already have. Here I use a function name, this one to make it clear. It's maybe not really clear here. I will put it here. So just make it comment. Here, I'm. this is a code that I have. So I connect to the RODBC. Under the RODBC, there is a function ODBC driver connect. As you see, I put the name of the driver, the server that I have, the database that I have, and if you, of course, if you have any username and password, you need to pass. So this is a string connection. Then I use another one named SQL Save that actually get the connection straight, convert the data set to the data frame. So this is the data that I want, and put the table name. And you can mention it should be append or not, or shows the rows name or the other one. So just let me uh, copy the code that I have here, I think, and back it here. Yep, that's a one. So now I'm going to actually to run it. So it should store my data set there. So it's very fast. I'm going to refresh that one. And it should be there. 
yeah so i have game of thrones image actually there so it's actually create that one for me uh yeah so you see that i have got there that are already created there so now actually uh i can change it also in different one or uh i can kind of going and change it in one so let's see that how you apply to the so again imagine that i'm in here i'm going to apply the r scripts here put it here put the name fact internet and just going to run it so the data frame and everything should be what so it's definitely because the bigger data set may take time okay so let's see that what we have there uh, so if i'm back here you see that it should be there okay i want to talk about an issue that i'm get there so this is a fake internet set because every time i refresh the data set the other one also be there so you see that i get another message here because every time the m refresh it's going to uh, write there so i need to write some r code to kind of don't do that so here as you see in the blog post that i write i'm going to write a if statement so i'm going to create library but before save it i use a just very simple call so i said table exit game of thrones for example this one in sql table table name if exists and the other thing so just going to copy and paste it instead of the other one and so instead of this and i change the name to the game of thrones so every time that actually is going to run is going to store the data like that so here i'm going to check that if the game of thrones exists don't go to paste it so just now it's run it I shouldn't get any error so that's the thing that we actually we have so every time you run it it's going to say the same process happen for here i should get an error here because it's going every time it's going to put it so it says that exists so again i need to do the same for this one so just put it here uh, the uh, the table name was fact internet so i just change it to fact internet just see and this one so when i run it it shouldn't go to do that so if and also if you said the append is going to uh, kind of put it there and append it to the other rows that we have there copy so you're just going to refresh it under the table so we already have these two just make sure that kind of we don't have any uh, issue over there okay so it should be okay now so just see that is now so whenever i refresh the data it's not going to open that and also if you want to save it there you can change a bit code to kind of every time happen i'm saying that that's a process how to handle about different this is just for one off so for example you done uh, for the uh, some transformation and for the first time you want to doing that and you don't want to kind of make trouble through that but if you want to make it as a schedule and the other you need to have more code on that so I just want to show you another way. So Imke actually, uh, she's really great in uh, M and R and the others. She also present a way to using the Python one. So she actually created a function through that. And you can see also check her blog post about how we can do it with Python to if you want to avoid the duplication. So this is all about that. So I hope you enjoy the video and i will hope to create every new video soon thank you